Hello and welcome back. Today's lecture is proving that the E, the exponential E, is in fact irrational. Um, I haven't actually seen this particular proof anywhere. Um, it goes back to my university days and uh, uh, I've seen a, a few proofs on the irrationality of V, but nothing what I'm going to show you uh, today. So let's start with it. So uh, this is how it goes, this, uh, this proof that I'm going to show you. So we're going to say that E is a, a, a rational number. So we're going to do by contradiction and is something of the form P over Q. Uh, and uh, let's say these are now, of course, integers in the simplest form. And uh, Q is a number which, of course, let's, uh, I should really write everything down. Uh, P and Q are, in fact, natural numbers with Q bigger than one. Okay. <coughs> Excuse my cough. So this is now the starting thing. We're going to prove that uh, if this is the case, then we have a problem. So, of course, we can write the E as a power series, as we know it. So it's going to be 1 plus 1 over 1 factorial plus 1 over 2 factorial and so on. And uh, we continue to write this until, of course, we reach the Q factorial. That's how the proof goes. Plus one over, oops, writing stupid things there. Q plus one factorial forever. So that's definitely our E. And uh, of course, since E, we're claiming to be P over Q. And uh, with these conditions, let's put them in a little bubble because I'm likely to rub them off stupidly it's halfway into the video okay so p over q we can say is going to be equal to again all of this thing here i do apologize uh, my workings and my videos have sometimes a lot of unnecessary detail with some people do appreciate that but for some people um this is actually quite tedious uh, at times. I'm one of these people I always like the detail. I don't know what kind of person are you? Do you like uh, uh, putting this all of these extra steps in uh, uh, in my resources, or do you think sometimes I'm almost? It almost feels that I'm patronizing you. I don't know. You let me know. So, um, that line is basically that line. I've just put a few extra terms and I wrote my E as being claimed in the beginning as P over Q. I'm going now to subtract oops, P over Q and I'm going to subtract some terms and I'm subtracting all the terms up to Q, up to here, sorry, to Q factorial rather, to the left. So it's going to be exactly this. Definitely that is correct. Okay, so, and we're going to examine what we got left, plus dot, dot, dot. And that's why I wrote a few extra terms there, so we can actually see on the next step what's going to happen. Q plus 1 factorial, plus 1 over Q plus 2 factorial, plus 1 over Q plus 3 factorial, and then forever to the right. <coughs> and then lastly... I'm going to multiply both sides of this particular equation that I've got in there by Q factorial. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say, you know what, Q factorial times all of this. I'll probably put in a bracket. I'll put an extra line. I hope it's visible up to here on my video. I normally put a little ruler there to actually tell me don't go below that line. Today I forgot to... To do it and because I'm sitting down I cannot actually see through the viewer uh, of the the phone that I'm using uh, what is visible and what isn't okay so far I hope you're following uh, all the steps I've done so far and of course I'm going to multiply the other side also by Q factorial so Q factorial times this is finite as you can see this is infinite on this side so q plus one factorial and observe some of the cancellations that will take place 
in the conclusions that I'm going to draw from there. Okay, plus dot dot dot. All right. So <clears throat> I can now look on the left. And after my multiplications, I'm going to have P. Q factorial divided by Q is going to give me Q minus 1 factorial. And then, of course, I'm going to have minus Q factorial. That's this bit here. And then it's, of course, another, I don't know whether. Let me just write so it's easy to see where that comes from. It's another Q factorial, of course. Q factorial over 1 plus Q factorial over 2 factorial, uh, which I could write a little bit better, but I, I can't be asked. Q factorial over 3 factorial plus um, Q. Sorry, one of the legs of my tripod is in the way and it stops me from writing properly there what I want to write. Plus dot dot dot. And then, of course, Q factorial um, and my signs changed as well. Um, halfway. They have actually changed here, so it's actually quite stupid, really. I didn't see it, and probably you're screaming. You know, when I subtracted these terms to the left, they're all minuses, of course, now, so. Luckily, some of the mistakes are recoverable. I mean, that's kind of like obvious silliness in all of this. So I hope you're following still what I'm doing, and uh, you don't think it's just, just a slight of hand, and I'm trying to confuse you and then not see that I'm doing something wrong. And of course, when I do Q factorial, divide by Q factorial, eventually the last term is going to be minus 1. Sorry, I don't need the square bracket. That's So this is now the line. I'm just making sure uh, you saw the, the obvious uh, oversight there when I subtracted these terms to the left from up to here. These are the terms on the right. And when this got subtracted to the left, they're all, of course, minuses. Then I times by Q factorial both sides. I've done the left-hand side so far and now when I go to the other side and times by q factorial I'm going to have q factorial over q plus 1 factorial that gives me 1 over q plus 1 and then plus q factorial over q plus 2 factorial will give me on the denominator a q plus 1 and maybe start really written it the, the other way around that it doesn't really matter um over Q plus 2, that's the extra terms on the bottom, and similarly the other one. So you can see the pattern. I'm going to write it like this because, of course, I wrote the other one also the same way. Q plus 3, 1, plus dot, dot, dot. Okay. Now, what do I have in here? <coughs> now, if you look on the left-hand side, I have an integer. This is definitely an integer. Okay. How comes an integer? If you look at the size of Q, size of Q is going to be bigger than any of these factorials. Therefore, when you're cancelling with four factorial, three factorial, I don't know, 77 factorial, whatever is there, you're still going to get a whole number. P is an integer, Q minus 1 is also an integer, factorial, of course, uh, there. And therefore, all of this, yeah, it might be negative. That is not uh, the, the issue. Um, I hope it's, I can't, I can't even think if it's, uh, uh, and it's irrelevant whether it's a, a positive or a negative because I've got a positive quantity there and loads of negatives here. But definitely, the left-hand side of this expression is an integer. Now, what happens now when I look at this bit here? Is that also an integer? Well, it has to be an integer because that's an integer, but there's a different bit of information that I'm getting from this line here. Now, Q is a number which is an integer which is bigger than one, much bigger than one, in fact, if you look at on the very first line. Um, I don't know what Q would be, I don't know, 100 factorial or whatever. So all of these quantities are, in fact, positive. Therefore, both sides of this particular equation represent a positive integer and now we need to do the final manipulation for which i will need this line but i need to do additional work so um, i'm going to need to rub everything above it keep that there still in view and let's see 
how we wrap that up. Um, what level is this kind of work? This is proof by contradiction at degree level, really. I mean, I saw this particular proof when I was at degree level. I was very fascinated and I thought it was a very elegant uh, proof. Um, so I think I might have moved my tablet a little bit. So please let me just uh, readjust it also. So at the moment, I'm going to look at this expression here. Okay, so I'm coming out of the main workings. Normally I will be doing it within the same piece of paper, but my tablet restricts me because I don't like to be doing side workings. It's not uh, mathematically elegant. So I'm going to look at the one over Q plus one, plus one over Q plus one, Q plus two, and so on. The right hand side basically of that and say, okay, what can, can I draw any more conclusions? Because remember, we didn't prove by contradiction. So something is wrong with what we have just written so far. And we I cannot see anything wrong so far. Okay, let's put that one in the middle there, plus dot dot dot. Then I can definitely say, and of course I can, let me actually write one more term. Um, since I'm gonna have to go to the next line anyway. And it'll be easier to see the pattern as well. Q plus four, plus dot dot dot. Now, if you look at this carefully, Okay, uh, we can definitely say that this line, infinitely go forever, is going to be less than this line here that I'm going to write. Of course, that is exactly the same. I'm going to change this term for anything. And I'm not going to change this term for anything either. And being good with your partial fractions and recognizing patterns um, is useful in this particular kind of work. But here, if you think about what I'm going to say. So, so far, this has been left untouched. But I'm going to say, now, that term, if I replace it with this term here, which, of course, is Q2 <coughs> Q plus 3. If I compare that with that, this particular term is actually larger than that. Think about it. I don't know. Let's say you have 1 over 5 times 6 times 7. Okay, that's with a 3, so that's going to be 5 times 6, which is 30, is 1 over 210. But if you replace, what, what, which one did I lose? I, I lost a smaller one, so the 5 there. 1 over 6 times 7 is 1 over 42. So I'm claiming 1 over, two, over 210 is clearly less than 1 over 42. So that is definitely now makes the inequality hold. And what I'm going to do with this one? I'm going to do a similar thing, and I'm going to say there, Q, and that's why I put the extra term there, because it's actually easier to see Q3 and Q4. So in this particular case, I'm making the denominator smaller. Therefore, this fraction here will be larger. So that line is definitely uh, uh, smaller than this line. That's larger. Now, there's patterns here with partial fractions. When they're differing by one, okay, so that's now equal 1 over q plus 1 and this you should be able to do by inspection is the 1 over q plus 1 over 1 over q plus 2 with a minus we can check this very very easily the q's going across they will cancel the minus and 2 minus 1 will give us 1 and this will give us that denominator oops i forgot the other one and we go to this particular uh, partial fraction again the differing by one so the positive is on there q plus two oops minus one over q plus three and again you can check that this does work it's exactly the same pattern and so on and this is going to be one over q plus three minus one over q plus four and i could have written more plus dot 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 but i don't need and you can see where i'm going with this now i can say okay this will be cancelling this, uh, this will be cancelling this, and this will be cancelling the next forever. And therefore, this quantity will, co will converge and become 2 lot 2 over q plus 1. So this plus this. And now I have a problem, okay, in all of this particular quantity. 
if I return to my equation that I've got here, that is equal to that. This side is definitely an integer we said, and this side definitely tells me something is positive. So both sides represent a positive integer. Then I looked at the right hand side, which is a positive integer, and I found that, um, let me just uh, rub off, I do apologize, it's just all this rubbing also makes the video much, much longer, but uh, unfortunately, my tablet does not allow to put any more writing in there, it will not be visible. And I'm writing sometimes too small, perhaps, even as it is, to, to be read on a normal, uh, sometimes on certain uh, laptops, small laptops or phones. Anyway, let me just uh, recap on what I've just said in there. So this quantity here, 1 over q plus 1 plus 1 over q plus 2. I wrote it the other way around there, gosh. Uh, plus 1 over q plus 1, q plus 2, q plus 3. We found that is in fact less than 2 over q plus 1. This says from this line here, I'm a positive integer. But now this is a problem. Q is bigger than one, which means if it's bigger than one, call it two, call it three, call it four, call it five, whatever you want to call it, two fifths, two ninths, two whatever, this is less than one. So this quantity is less than one. We have a contradiction. The contradiction is, of course, we just found a positive integer, which is this bit here, which is less than one. There isn't such thing. Contradiction, therefore, E cannot be written as P over Q subject to these conditions, and the proof concludes. Um, I haven't um, done a very good video, I believe, on, on this occasion, purely because I haven't done this kind of proof since I was at university and uh, I had to look things up before the, this particular video. And I don't know if I explained it well. Knowing and understanding yourself is very different to actually trying to explain to somebody who's trying to follow it. And the concepts involved in this particular question are, are, are quite high. Um, so my advice is to look at this video and pause it where you don't understand, write it down until you it makes sense to you and it's clear in your head. Um, okay, I'm going to be signing out. Thank you for watching this particular uh, edition and I'll be seeing you real soon with more stuff. Bye for now.